What does phono cartridge loading mean? Hmm. Well, this great question comes from Benjamin in Singapore. Hmm. Benjamin in Singapore. One of my best friends in this industry is a guy named Benjamin from Singapore, but I'm guessing this is not Ben Chia. <laughs> ben, ben Chia is, is a lifelong friend, and uh, I really love that guy. He's uh, quite an audiophile and a musician, lives in Singapore, and he, absolute sounds, I think. Anyway, his, his company still probably still in business out there. Benjamin, if you're out there, how you doing, buddy? So, all right. Um, <clears throat> Benjamin, another Benjamin, asks, what is impedance and the relationship between the cartridge and the phono preamp? I haven't found anything on the internet that explains, uh, it, it explains like I was, oh, it, as if I were 10 years old. Well, leave that to me. <laughs> I heard that some phono stages have an option to change the impedance from 100 ohms to 800 ohms, and choosing a higher setting would output a better musical experience. Well, so, phono cartridges are a, what we would call an electromechanical device. So you've got, let, let's just take a, uh, a moving magnet cartridge. Um, in a moving magnet cartridge, <clears throat> we have a magnet that moves, right? <laughs> you've, got, you've got your needle, and attached to the top of the, the cantilever, the needle, is a, a magnet, and surrounding that are some coils of wire. And as that needle moves back and forth in the groove of the record, that magnet is getting closer and farther away from the coil of wire. And we know, we remember, that when we take a magnet and we hold it and, and, and move it near a coil of wire, we create an electrical field, an electrical energy comes from that. And we know the opposite. If we put electrical energy into a coil of wire, we make a magnet. So that's, that's something that, you know, uh, Michael Faraday showed us hundreds of years ago. I mean, that, that's, that's the basis of pretty much everything we do. This, this, uh, that's, how, that's how these lights are being generated. You know, unless we have a nuclear power plant, what's happening is uh, a, a coal or a natural gas-fired power plant is boiling water. That water is turned to steam. That steam goes past a, uh, an impeller, and, and it spins... Um, a, uh, a, a set of magnets, uh, and, and there's coils around it. And as those magnets spin uh, next to the coils of wire, they, um, they make electricity. That's, that's how we get it. Or you could do it the opposite. You could be spinning coils and magnets. Anyway, doesn't matter. So, but that's what's happening in there, okay? So, and in a moving coil, um, the same thing. We've got on top of the cantilever, the, the, the needle, we, instead of magnets, we have coils of wire, which are very light, and at the outside we have magnets. In any case, whatever we're doing, we're moving a magnet near a coil of wire, however we're doing that. And the output of our cartridge, when you connect your cartridge up to your phono preamplifier, what you're doing is you're connecting that coil of wire to an electronic input stage. Now, Coils of wire have, um, what's the easiest way for a 10 year old to explain this? Um, they, they, they have to be loaded down to specific free, uh, 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 impedances, okay? Because um, it, it really, it, it changes how their high frequency um, uh, content gets through the coil. All right, so if, and, and remember, all this is moving. This is all alternating current, right, because the needle is moving back and forth. And so the coil is creating these, these bursts of electrical energy. And if you just think about uh, that coil of wire, you know, uh, producing this, this energy, uh, on one end you've got ground, and then you, this energy is going through, and it's going into what we call a load. If the load is low, the, uh, and, and then it's not going to be, have uh, as, as much high frequency response. In other words, things getting through there fast um, are, are going to struggle to get through the wire if the impedance is low, if the resistor is low that's setting that impedance. And as that impedance gets higher, 
um, it's easier for fast moving electricity to get through there. So as the, as the impedance on the, on, the, on the input of your phono preamplifier rises, say from 100, as in your question, to 800, um, you'll get more high frequencies. But there's also, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's, there's, you, it has to be what we call properly damped, so that, that if it rings, um, it doesn't get overshoot. There is an optimum impedance for every single cartridge. Uh, and if you exceed that, then they, you'll get a tilted up, you get an unnatural frequency response. So the higher, if, if it says you want to have 100 ohms for this cartridge and you use 500 ohms, you're going to tilt the top end of that cartridge up. And if you have, if it's supposed to be 100 ohms and you have 50 ohms, you're going to tilt the top end down. So it won't have as many high frequencies. It's probably the easiest way to explain it. A moving magnet cartridge typically wants to see 47,000 ohms. Now, we used to offer on our phono preamps years ago the ability to go up as high as 100,000 ohms because sometimes that just brought a, a bit of life, more high frequencies, out of that cartridge and took some of the, the load depending on the cartridge. But generally, you want 47,000 for a moving magnet cartridge moving coil cartridges because they're, 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 the, the number of winds and all that are very different than a moving magnet, you want to have much lower uh, um, impedance. So they're typically 100 ohms, 10 ohms, you know, I, I've seen it. The best thing to do is to follow the manufacturer of your cartridge's recommendation. They'll tell you this, this optimum impedance is 100 ohms. And then if you want to dink around with changing it, just know that as you raise the impedance, you're going to get a little bit more boost on the top end. And that may or may not work well with your system. I hope that wasn't too convoluted. <laughs> All right. Good question. And if you see my buddy Ben Chi out there in Singapore, you say hi from Paul. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you.